we're going to be taking a look at temporal denoising inside of Fusion. And we have this scene here that was rendered uh, inside of Blender by my friend Red Hoot. And he's actually put the scene uh, up for sale, so uh, check the links in the description below. I'm also going to put the project file up on Gumroad, so if you're interested in supporting this channel, there's going to be a tiny little fee to download the file. If you don't want to do that, you can just follow along with the tutorial. We have about 50 frames worth of images here that we're going to try and do temporal denoising with, and um, this EXR actually contains not just the beauty, but also the uh, motion vectors as well. So if you're not familiar with motion vectors, they are actually colored images where each color represents the direction and magnitude a pixel is heading towards in the next frame. So and we're going to be using this motion vector pass to push the pixels around so we can create three fairly similar looking images that we can combine together in order to create something that has less noise and less flicker. So the first thing that we want to do is put down a time speed node. And we want to set the delay to one frame because we want to delay it by one frame. And then we want to set the interpolation mode to nearest and that's quite important. So what we have now is the previous frame and the next frame. Uh, the current frame and let's get the next frame as well so we're going to put that here and we're going to delay it by minus one so now we have previous frame current frame and next frame the second order of business is to extract the motion vectors from the sequence so we're going to put down a channel boolean and we're going to set the uh, rgba to be x vector and y vector and you'll get this funky looking image, but we're only concerned about the red and the green channel. The blue channel doesn't contain any useful information. So the next thing is to put down a displace node. And it lets us displace the image using another image, in this case, our motion vectors. So you can do quite funky things like uh, warping and bending, but we want to actually set it to not radial, but X and Y. And then we want to set the refraction strength to be 1 over 2048 which is the horizontal resolution of this image and you want to do the same thing for the Y and it's a bit funny but Fusion normalizes the coordinates so you need to use the the width for both of them so 1 over 2048 and what we have now is the previous frame and the current frame so if we zoom in now we can see that they're actually overlapping quite well rather than being the previous frame and the current frame. This is the displaced previous frame and the current frame. And we're going to do the same thing for the next frame. So we're going to put down the uh, channel booleans and connect the displaced node. And instead of displacing it in a positive direction, we actually want to just negate it and put it in a negative uh, direction. So we're going to push the vectors back. So now we have current previous frame, current frame, and the next frame. And they all align now. So the next thing we can do is put down a channel boolean and just add the three frames together. So we're gonna take the previous frame and the next frame and we're gonna set it to add. And we're gonna put down another channel boolean and add the last one. And it's a little bit brighter, but that's because we're adding the three images together. So we need to um, scale it back down again and that will be one, three. So now we actually have a sequence of frames where if you look at the noise level in the original, let's zoom in and let's look at the noise level in the uh, temporal denoised version. Let's just uh, take off the smooth resize. And you can see it is indeed quite a bit less noisy. And one of the added benefits uh, of doing this as well is even if you're doing temporal denoising this way, if you start feeding it AI denoise, like using uh, Open Image Denoiser from Intel, uh, and feeding that into this, you can you can get some really really high quality renders with very very low computation. And the other benefits being that if there's any flickering going on in the render, it'll actually smooth some of that out. So let's take a look at some of the other areas where you can see this is quite quite noisy actually. You see here we got a tiny render error. There's some uh, popping in the uh, frame, probably some overlapping. And you can see here that the temporal denoise has actually smoothed it out a little bit because it's averaging together three frames. There's a couple of uh, problems with this method and one of them being that for extreme objects you start seeing doubling up on geometry. So for instance if you look at the signpost here on the uh, left hand side, uh, if you zoom into the denoised version you can start seeing ghosting effect like there's like tripling up because the motion vectors can't push the pixels back into a perfect state. So. 
uh, that's something you're going to have to deal with. And one of the methods that we can use to get rid of some of that overlap is by instead of doing instead of adding them together and then dividing it, which is basically an average, we can do a median on three frames. And let's take a look at that next. In order to do a median, we need to do a bunch of min and max operations. And you can do that using the channel booleans and, and set the operation to uh, maximum or minimum. For ease of use, I've actually just saved these as presets, so I can hit tab and go max and min. So that's what I'm going to do. They are just channel boolean nodes. So the first thing that we're going to do is just put down a max node and take the displaced previous frame and the current frame. And then we want to take a minimum of those as well. So we're just going to call this min and we're going to do exactly the same. And then we're going to do a minimum between this one and the next frame and then we're going to do another max where we combine this one and the uh, minimum of this one and uh, if this is confusing then don't worry uh, this file is actually available on Gumroad if you're so inclined but you can pretty much see the uh, the setup here so if you take a look at this now it does indeed clear the image just like the uh, the average one so this is the average and this is the median but what it actually does, especially on areas where you have uh, lots of moving and overlapping geometry, is that it actually gets rid of a lot of that sort of uh, ghosting that we had previously. So this is the uh, setup with the average, and if we do a median instead, you'll get this. It does retain a little bit of the noise. You can see it's uh, this is the, uh, the average, and the median is a little bit sharper. But it's great for doing things where you have ghosting um, that can appear because of uh, tripling up of images. So, Another issue with doing temporal denoising is that the first and the last frame of the sequence doesn't actually work. And that's because it's referencing frames that aren't there, because it's looking for the previous frame, and if you start at frame 1, that's going to be looking at a frame that doesn't exist. And same for the last frame of the sequence. So if you scroll to the um, last frame of this little sequence, you can see that it's actually, this is the, the second to last, it looks pretty good, and the last frame actually reintroduces a lot of the noise and that's because there's a frame missing essentially so you get a third less of the uh, the samples to play with. Here's another example where we've been feeding it the denoiser from Blender and that's a spatial denoiser so it'll only denoise one image at a time and there's no temporal coherency between uh, between images and you can see that even though it's fairly low samples you get very very clean result but you can instantly see there's a bunch of flickering happening here. And uh, let's see what happens if you feed it through the temporal denoiser. So let's do that on the left-hand side. Let's zoom in at roughly the same area. And you can just see how much more stable and clean the result is. There's hardly any flickering. And there's hardly any noise as well. It has a tendency to do a little bit softening to the image, so be careful with that. But if you're also applying things like motion blur and depth of field, and maybe other uh, lens type artifacts, then uh, the degradation for just doing denoising should be minimal. So this technique works great for static objects. If you start having complicated movement in, let's say, things like characters or things with uh, fuzzy edges like hair, you're going to run into different uh, problems. So Keep that in mind, this method isn't foolproof, but it's certainly a very, very good trick that I've been using for years on feature films. And you can download this file on Gumroad for a small fee. You'll get this little Fusion script and you'll get the EXR rendered sequence as well if you want to have a play with it and see, uh, and see what works. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around.